Welcome all to Coach Jacksonville, and today is March the 2nd, 2021. Can you believe it? We're already into March, and um, and today we have a terrific program with um, Ed Chang. going to be talking about My Career Assist. Uh, right now, I'd like for everybody to do self-introduction, so if you can introduce yourself and say who you are, what you're doing, and uh, perhaps something that's remarkable that's going on in your world right now. So, um, so uh, Elizabeth Reed, can we start off with you? Of course. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Elizabeth Reed. I'm the president of ICF North Florida. And um, I always wanted to put in a plug for what we're up to. So ICF North Florida is a very similar coaching community to this one. Um, and I just uh, love it so much. So um, and I and there are a few people on here that are members of ICF North Florida. The next event we have coming up is March 10th, a free happy hour. And we have we're upgrading our happy hours to have coaching topics. So come on March 10th. Mm -hmm. Um, icfnorthflorida.org you can register and then the next thing is uh, our chapter meeting where you can get continuing coach education units ccews um, i think that's what that stands for <laughs> um, yeah continue ned uh, the power of metaphor exploring clean language mm -hmm. with laura maloney laura is an excellent coach she travels all over the world helping nonprofits that have something to do with animals so it's um, animal rights or zoos or all kinds of cool things like that. Uh, but she is wonderful and I think you'd really love her. And there's other events. So go on to icfnorthflorida.org, which I'll put that in the chat and um, register. And let's see, what's going on with me? So I, I think I mentioned last month, I'm doing positive intelligence, the training to become a mental fitness coach. And I finished my first pod a six weeks program with a group of people and they loved it. So mm. um, Shirzad Shamin is still offering this coach training, the initial seven week training for coaches for free. Go on positiveintelligence.com and find all the information. Um, highly worthwhile for me personally and for my clients. Because what I find with coaching, you know, we say the client knows the answer and they, it may be under there. <laughs> But it's covered up with so many layers of limiting beliefs and fear and judgment that uh, educating the client about those things can be separate from actually coaching the client toward their goal. Those things, and that's what I like about PQ. They can work on their own awareness of their limiting beliefs and fears and all that, their saboteurs, and shift to sage thinking through the coaching. I love it. So. Good. Thanks, Elizabeth. That's a, that's a great update and uh, inspirational about um, the positive intelligence. Thank you. I have a question for Elizabeth. Do you mind quickly around the uh, meetings? Um, are there, uh, I belong to the national. Uh, so, you know, do you charge for those meetings? So the happy hours are, they're virtual. Virtual happy hours are free. And mm -hmm. we'd love to have you come get to know us. The Chapter meetings are $20, and those have the CCEUs. Okay. Um, if you want to become a member, because you're a member of ICF Global, it's less expensive, than, or the, the dues are less mm -hmm. than uh, for people that are not a member of Global. So it's $120 a year if you're a mem not a member of Global, and $95 if you are. OK. All right, thanks. But yeah, and happy hour. And you could just come to one or two and just pay the $20 for the programs. OK, good, thanks. Good, good. Yeah, ICF is an excellent organization, uh, particularly in North Florida. So, love it. Um, Ed, why don't you, you're next on my screen. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ed Chang. Uh, I founded My Career Assist. Uh, I pivoted a couple of years ago uh, from a corporate uh, leadership role in supply chain and procurement to do this. Uh, and I got inspired by my teams. Uh, they needed something to support them in their careers. And, and in an organic way, we came up and developed a process. It just so happens uh, we didn't take anything uh, from, you know, the internet and research or 
some consultant. We just built it ourselves and it had a lot of similarities. And so uh, we're trying to reach uh, a, a number of segments, working professionals, uh, uh, sorry, working professionals across different industries or, or, or markets, right? Uh, corporations, government agencies, academic institutions. One of the things that we're very excited about, and um, I'll plug it now because Damien is on the call. Uh, Damien is one of our uh, chairs for um, Black Professionals Career Development Program, an initiative that we're trying to do um, in the U.S. And so we're going to be reaching out to um, professional associations, organizations, and corporations, uh, specifically targeting ERGs, uh, to nominate um, individuals who are uh, high potential uh, to be a part of our program. And so we really want to uh, reach emerging leaders uh, and give them the opportunity to accelerate and grow their careers in an effective and independent way. Great. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see, how about Carmen? You introduce yourself. Okay, uh, I'm Carmen Rivera. I live down here in Port Orange, which is near Daytona. Um, and uh, what's been happening in, well, let me see, I'm taking the MBSR training, which is mindfulness-based stress reduction that was uh, developed, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago by John Kabat-Zinn. So all about mindfulness and that goes right along with my meditation practice. So the idea is if I finish the MBSR, I can help others also develop uh, meditation practices and mindfulness. I also have just finished a writing class online and uh, I've taken several writing classes. Uh, I prefer them to be out of the country. Like in 2019, I was in Italy for a week writing class. In Costa Rica, I've been several times for writing classes. <laughs> the writing class is just an excuse to get out there. So that's one of the things I miss most about being uh, here. It's stuck in the pandemic. It was March 16th, 2020, the last time I was on an airplane. And mm. I, I miss flying. A lot of people miss other things. I still can touch with families and everything. I just miss flying and traveling. And uh, so those two things. And then the most important thing that just happened on the 25th of this month, I got my first COVID shot. So wow. I've been vaccinated and my next shot is March 25th. And as soon as that happens, I'm going to go on a road trip. <laughs> so uh, I'm excited about that part. A uh, little bit about me. I started my own company uh, 35 years ago, New Insights Inc. It was called Applied Training International because I lived up in the Northern Virginia area outside of Washington, D.C. When I moved here to uh, Florida in 2001, I reinvented and I thought beginning of the new 21st century, let's go ahead and change the name. So it's New Insights. So I've been doing workshops and interpersonal skills, um, what, 35 years, more actually over basically since 1969. So I've been in the field for over 50 years and I've been a coach, life coach, um, a little over tw maybe 20 years. I did the New, Fo New Field Network uh, back in 2001 as a certified coach. Uh, and so right now I'm in semi-retirement. Uh, I get all kinds of invitations from LinkedIn that, oh, I can help you market yourself. I'm not interested in getting any new clients. Thank you. I like my, you know, right now I do about one class a month. This week I'm doing a class on influence skills online. So I like the, just been working three days out of every month, you know, writing, hanging out, Zooming with children, grandchildren, siblings, uh, that sort of thing. So that's where I am, enjoying life right here through the technology of Zoom, like we are here, and looking forward to going on a road trip sometime this summer. <laughs> so, Carmen, uh, in all cases, you are a um, inspiration to me and to so many others. So I, I, I appreciate your coming on and, um, and it just inspires me to have a, um, a well-lived life. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I should be retired, but I kind of like all of this. So I just do a little bit of I, I can pick and choose when I want to work. And I also work without pay for some people. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. That's my good. pro bono work, you know, so. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, Damien, let's hear from you. Okay. 
Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon again, everybody. I'm Damian McFarland. Um, as I said, I'm the uh, director for uh, graduate medical education at Ascension St. Vincent's here in Jacksonville. Um, you know, I just joined the um, today's meeting just to be in support of um, my good buddy, uh, Eddie Chang. Um, certainly a big proponent and fan of my career assistant. I think it has some tremendous value. Um, much like Doug, um, I'm inspired by Carmen already. So looking forward to <laughs> looking forward to hearing more from this group um, and hopefully being able to offer some of my own personal insights and experiences as well. Fabulous. Thank you, Damien. Anytime you want to join us, you just join us first uh, Monday and usually the next two, the next day. Um, good. Thank you. Uh, Leela. Sorry, I had to take myself off mute. Um, I'm Leela Wallet, and um, I'm newly certified, but I've been coaching about five years um, in relocations, so transitions and job search with those relocations with Impact Group. And um, we downsized because of COVID a little over a year ago, but I just actually started working with them again. So I'm actually recruiting for them right now. I had a dual role of recruiting and coaching with Impact Group for the last six years. And um, now I am recruiting coaches all over the world because that's where we need them uh, for some relocation business, which is on the uptick. I don't know, maybe it's because of the vaccine, but I'm just happy about it. So, um, but I'm just establishing my own job search, um, career coaching practice. I have a few uh, pro bono clients, um, various reasons. Some were laid off. One's a mom getting back into the workforce. Um, and um, I've signed on with another like outplacement firm. So hope to work, you know, with job search and outplacement as well. And something exciting in my life is we are going to the Keys in two weeks and I can't wait. Um, mm -hmm. Like you, Carmen, I love to travel and I miss traveling, but we're, we're so done with not traveling. We're getting in our truck, taking the boat, taking our son, and just the three of us are going to get out of town. <laughs> Have you been to the Keys before? Have you been to the Keys? No, this will be our first time to the Keys. We've only lived in Florida a couple of years. We've been coming to St. Augustine for like 10 years. That's where we live, but um, just moved here recently and then so the Keys is on our bucket list, Bahamas, you know, all that. I've been there four times, it's, you'll, you'll like it. I've yeah, we're gonna do a lot of fishing. It's really, that I don't do, but it's <laughs> very nice, you enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. That sounds like fun. Uh, Jane, let's hear from you. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jane Witzka. I've been doing this for a long time. I hesitate to say how long I've, I've been doing it. And last week I got my second shot and I've called all my uh, living solo friends to let someone else know they got that shot because I didn't feel real great the next day. Kind of spent the day in bed watching Lawnmire on Netflix. That's kind of was my level of functioning that particular day. Nothing terribly serious, but I just felt awful. And now I feel terrific and I'm looking forward to a little more cautious freedom. Um, my focus is, is on career management. I do a lot of uh, actual job search. I also do a lot of transition to a new job uh, coaching. And I guess the good news I have to report besides the, the vaccine is I'm finding people are landing jobs. And one of my favorite stories is a guy who uh, sold franchises in the hospitality industry in the Caribbean. And we were having these conversations about, do I retire and play music all the time? Or do I look for another job? Am I too old? You've probably heard this kind of scenario before. Out of the blue, he got a phone call from a competitor and he's going to be doing a very similar role that he did for many years and the pay and commission structure is far more attractive than what he had prior to his layoff. Um, at the other extreme, I um, will be working with a guy whose skill level is uh, driving a forklift and 
keeping track of supplies. And on my web, uh, my LinkedIn profile, I always say that I work with people on the shop floor through the C-suite and this month anyway, it just reinforces that that's, that's what I do. It's, um, it's the same process regardless of the level. We just need to tweak it a little bit as you get further up the uh, ladder. And um, one of the hardest things for me to do is to convince somebody who tells me they're used to making $240,000 a year when they go on several different interviews that they're probably not a very good interviewer and maybe we need to do some video practice. That's probably the hardest thing for me to convince somebody to uh, do. Um, I also left the impact group after over 14 years and I'm pleased to say that I got that lead from this group but I had to go because I didn't want to stay for 15 years and still not have a raise. So I did it. It was a huge decision and it's good. Making more money than I ever had before, which is always a good thing. Yeah. Jane, you're gonna be missed at Impact Group though. Hey, more money would have kept me. <laughs> I'm glad it's working out well for you now. Uh, Brian, let's hear from you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Brian Burt, uh, a 20-year veteran of the, of the Navy, spent uh, probably about two years here in Jacksonville working with the USO um, as a career um, coach, um, helping transitioning military members get out of the military and also to help uh, you know, military spouses as they transition to station to help them land the next job to develop their interview skills and all stuff like that. And right now I've transitioned from that to um, an organization called Campers in RV, where I am their performance coach. There are about 30, 30 uh, locations on the East Coast of the of, of, uh, United States. And so I'm helping the organization develop their, their leaders and help their performance uh, coaching with that. Um, background with coaching, I, I've uh, been, been uh I have a qualification through John Maxwell team and I'm also just started um, my, my first class heading toward my, towards my ACC through ICF. You know, I'm about to finish in I have one class left of completing my certified professional coach class through the uh, Center for Coaching Certification. So look forward to finishing that and keep on going and hopefully by the end of this year being um, ACC qualified. So that's what I'm heading for and glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good. Uh, Caroline. Hi, I am Caroline. I am Doug's director of marketing. Um, I feel like I filled in most of you. I got married this weekend and I'm planning my honeymoon. But other than that, as always, there's um, the Wilder Wisdom subscription for anyone who's interested uh, through Wilder Business Success. There's a free version and there's a $5 version that right now has three months free, which gets you a weekly Wilder Wis Wisdom Wednesday video from Doug. Um, and uh, I think that's all. Excellent. Good. And I am Doug Wilder, um, uh, the um, great employee of Caroline. Uh, she tells me what to do and when to do it and how to do my um, videos and Got a white, uh, a, green, a green screen over on the wall. So she puts the camera in front of me and she says, speak. And then uh, let's do another take and let's do another take until I get it right. So, uh, so I'm enjoying this, um, this, uh, this process. Um, yeah, I've been coaching now for 27 years and, um, and the, the focus has been uh, honest attorneys that want to make boatloads of money. Um, and where it's going now is, is still on the fire prevention business, uh, preventing people from getting fired. And uh, that seems to be um, a, a fun process for me because it turns out that 78% of the time I can uh, not only have them become more productive, have the, the people who are high maintenance become high performance, but also to become high performers and stay with the company. 
So, um, uh, so what's happening in my world, I, I, I mentioned last time that I was working on a book um, and I am making uh, little inches towards writing the book. It's on de-stress. Um, and so, um, and so I just want to put that out there that I'm still working on it. I haven't been working 15 minutes a day, like I had planned to do. So, um, so having made this announcement now, I'm maybe inspired. I hope I will be inspired to do it, uh, starting, starting today. I, actually yesterday I started, um, yeah, somebody came and jumped into my office and said, Hey, how's your book coming? And uh, so I was held accountable right then. And so, okay, so 15 minutes a day should get it done. Um, okay, so is there, are there any other announcements that need to be made before we get started with the program? No? Okay. Um, well, um, let's jump right into the program then because it's a fascinating program um, and, um, and Ed has a lot to talk about as well as um, I, I would love for him to also hear about how what he's talking about fits into your coaching um, and, the, and your experiences in the past and maybe your experiences in the future and, and how that might all tie together. Uh, because um, uh, because I think there is some uh, some great possibilities here. So um, so without uh, uh, further ado, let's let's you know Ed, if you can take it away, you know you you've introduced yourself. Um, you've gone from the corporate world to now creating this system. You and your team have created a system that you plan to roll out um, not just here in Jacksonville but throughout the country maybe throughout the world um, with, um, uh, with your dashboards and all your different pieces too. So I don't know how you want to break it down into bite-sized pieces, but, um, but take it away. Let's, let's, let's hear how you, how you want to um, uh, make this the new world sensation for, um, for assisting people with careers. I'll start with um, the, the cliche from uh, the movie, What About Bob? Uh, baby steps. So we'll start uh -huh. with baby steps. Yeah. Um, so um, all of you, except for Damien, are coaches. And uh, you have coached probably some very ambitious, high-performing individuals to some that are not as ambitious and uh, probably lots support, right? And, uh, and I'll use an anecdote. I, I met with an executive from the National Association of Black Accountants. The, this individual, it was the president of the New York chapter and he's a, a young man and he figured it out late. He spent uh, 20 years working and eventually worked his way up. Um, he had the uh, fortune of uh, having wonderful advisors and people in his life uh, that helped him reach um, and help him uh, challenge himself and continuously look for opportunities to grow. And when I was interviewing with him or pitching our program, he gave me an introduction. He walked through all five steps of our process without being prompted. He never saw um, our framework before. And it just so happens that he had the people and the support system um, and the drive to inquire, to ask about what he needs to do to get from point A to point F. Now, all of you help people um, achieve that fulfillment, achieve that goal um, in different ways, right? And we all endeavor to help others, as many people as we can. And that was the inspiration for my career assist. So that'll be the, the segue. We talked about with this individual, his name is Roots, about the fact that um, corporate leaders, organizational leaders all over the world in different industries and uh, different trades uh, will all have an opportunity as long as they're ambitious, as long as they're curious and have a drive to do more or different. But that's a very small population or a small uh, segment of the entire workforce. There are tens of millions of people in the world that are hardworking, that are committed, 
that are phenomenal professionals, no matter what industry or trade, but they don't ask the questions because they're hoping, and, and you know, this is an interesting way, right? I heard this a lot. They're hoping that a strategy of luck and fortune will happen to them. And then they'll toil and then they'll give their life, they'll give their energy for their employer or employers for over 20 to 25 years and they'll probably in the same place, they may get some promotions, they'll get some opportunities, but it won't be what they want. And so that is our mission. And that is our vision is that we hope to reach as many working professionals. We'll start North Florida. Then we'll expand to Florida, maybe the Southeast. No, definitely the Southeast. And then the US and possibly North America. We wanna give um, and share our knowledge and the framework that you all use, because I suspect they're all probably very similar um, to those individuals that probably need it more. And it doesn't really change how corporate workforce development and planning takes place. It doesn't change it drastically, but it enables everyone to reach and position themselves to do something that makes them more fulfilled and happy. And we all know, right? People who feel uh, professionals who are fulfilled, who, are, uh, who uh, feel like they had the right support are far more effective and productive in their workplace. And so that's what we wanna achieve. I'm gonna segue now, because I'm gonna share with you uh, what we have developed and then how it matters and how it is applicable. And I'm going to ask each and every one of you to talk about your experiences and how it would, uh, how it would be meaningful to collaborate. One second. Excellent, thanks Caroline for allowing me to share. All right. We want to share with everybody about career planning and uh, the ideology that we want to do via communication is interest, capability, and advocacy. Interest is on the individual, what their goals are, what aspires, what their aspirations, what their interests and what fulfills them. Capability is the collaboration between an individual and their employer. And what that means is uh, we all have the capability to learn and to grow, but we do need support and collaboration with our employers to give us the opportunity in the way of content and jobs. Advocacy is more so on the responsibility of the employer. They provide commitment and support and programs to enable individuals to grow. So that collaboration between individual professionals and organizations are what enable all of us to reach our maximum potential and for us to find fulfillment in our work. How do we get corporations to buy in on this? Because we know that the value from a coaching perspective, we understand the value that the coaches provide and the experiences that the individual would see. We want to integrate the employer because, frankly, we want them to pay. Uh, but there's a significant amount of value from a data perspective. And here's how. Talent management and talent strategies in organizations are directly related to the business needs. How they derive uh, the needs for the business goals will determine how they recruit and how they develop their workforce we endeavor to integrate career development into talent management strategies. We wanna do that because career planning and career development integrates individual career interests and goals, right? We're not going to, um, we want to change the traditional paradigm of letting corporations and managers tell their workforce they should do X, Y, and Z because they've exhibited some sort of capability um, or performance or productivity. We wanna choose, we want that right to choose. And I think it's re very reasonable for individuals to choose what they want. With that information, organizations then are able to augment the talent strategies to put people in the right positions in place and generate talent, excuse me, learning and development strategies and programs to ensure that individuals are trained and given the right experiences to reach their career goals. Here's our career development framework. This is pretty straightforward. 
fundamental. Everyone who's a career coach or a career counselor, I'm a career counselor, have been introduced to these fundamental concepts. We just try to do things slightly simpler. And you'll see this is more focused on career development and less on job searches or resume writing. We help um, individuals learn more about themselves, help them build their brand, and help them and help remind them that they are unique and special, and they have strengths, capabilities, and preferences. Okay, Brian, I'll send you the presentation slides. No worries. Who they are and their attributes has a significant impact on how they choose their goals, and what moves them, and what fulfills them in their careers. So after the branding section, we move to the goal setting. And is this interesting? So many life coaches that I've met, and I haven't met that many, a couple of dozen, uh, they work extensively with clients to help them figure out what they want to do. And so we've organically integrated and designed some very simple measures and strategies for individuals to really learn whether or not they would like a particular role or a particular career. And it's simply doing informational interviews and shadowing. There's more to it than that because it, do, it does take a significant amount of time and energy. But I, um, we've learned through our uh, clients and also through pilots that uh, not enough people invest the time to really research careers, to research jobs, to research industries. There may be things that um, are requirements of the job that really excites individuals and some that turn off. Right? People who've gone through our program have pivoted. They've decided that uh, their research have led them to make a different decision. Others reinforce their goals and are far more excited because now they understand all the critical skills and competencies and behaviors that are required for, for a per particular job. Once an individual or individuals identified the career goal, we help them build an advisory board. Having mentors and coaches, sponsors and advocates are um, really important. We talked about uh, my friend Roots um, and his career growth and progression. He was pretty serious. He wouldn't have been able to do that without his uh, mentors and guides. And so uh, we uh, I designed our program to incorporate this particular step following goal setting because an individual, um, I think Jane mentioned it, if they want to be a C-suite leader, that advisory board is going to be very unique. If they wanted to be a shop for supervisor, his or her advisory board is going to be far different because the, uh, the skills and behaviors are going to be very and vastly different for those types of roles. Once uh, this infrastructure is set, right, your brand is built, your goal is set, and your advisors are in place, you start to build a development plan. Now, development plan for us is slightly different than what a professional development plan or a leadership development plan happens in a corporation. The types of development programs in corporations are to improve an individual's capability to perform and to be more effective and productive. The career development plan we, we help individuals build is a strategy to enable them to understand the key concepts of skills, competencies, and behaviors required for their career goal they then they reconcile their capabilities to the needs of the particular role and then identify skill gaps. And that list of skills and competencies that they currently do not have is what we would provide support to help them generate a learning plan so that they can acquire those skills either on the job or outside of their day to day. It could be um, a lateral move. It could be a promotion. It could be stay in place, but get the employer to agree to put them on special projects, key areas, excuse me, put them on special projects or assignments that enhance their ability and develop key skills that they need to move to the next milestone of their career. And then we talk about navigation, career navigation and career movement. Once they have their development plan in place and the learning strategy identified, we teach them to focus on continuous growth. What we mean by that is they now have a strategy for growth and development. They should always be looking 
in their next job, whatever it is that they aspire to do, they should be working to learn new skills and capabilities that will support their qualification towards their career goal. You know, there's an interesting thing that I, I speak with um, clients often or um, uh, potential clients where people um, are, or talent acquisition usually find people who are 100% qualified for a role. And I find that interesting because how then, how can people grow if they're always going to be 100% qualified for a role or a job, right? And I understand sometimes if you get 30% more than you're currently being paid, that's a very difficult job or opportunity to turn down. But we have to be very strategic in our decisions, right? If we want to be a, a director of technology or a director of human resources, and we know we have gaps and skills and capabilities, uh, I believe, and we as a, or, uh, as a business, we believe that it is really important uh, that an individual acquires skills so they should look for opportunities for them to acquire and develop skills that are critical for that dream job that they have. So we, you know, we help people, co we coach and help people make decisions. And, and that is part of, what, that's one major strategy in navigation. This is the outcome. If you haven't seen this already, I'll, um, I will stop talking for about a minute and let you digest the information. You'll see clearly our five steps are clearly represented. This is what we call an individual career plan. It is a career strategy for the individuals, and this is the output of our career development program. All right, I'm going to go over it very quickly, each section, and then I'd love to hear your thoughts and questions on how do we use this. Step one, we talked about branding. There are assessments uh, that help us define key attributes of us, preferences, values, behaviors, interests, strengths. We have assessments available. They're free, and they're very close from the outputs uh, of those that are paid versions of these assessments. We have six of them and they're very good, they're very different. Step two, goal setting. This is my professional career goal. I aspire to be a supply chain executive or a chief supply chain officer for a company in the healthcare and life sciences industry. My advisors are on a lower right-hand corner. These individuals were my professional uh, mentors and coaches, uh, both in a corporate uh, career as well as in my startup. My development plan is on the lower left. And we'll briefly go and kind of digress, if you don't have any questions, on how we generate the content for steps four and five. Any questions? We got one. Why didn't you decide to put step three after step four and five? Ah, so if we were uh, looking at it from a clock perspective, you wouldn't have asked me that question, Doug. Right. That's true. Okay. Thank you. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason. We simply wanted to um, uh, put that there because uh, what we teach is that your advisory board will change. Um, when you, when, when uh, an individual or groups, they finish their development plan, they may change it. So it, it, to us, it, it doesn't really matter the order. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if that was a good answer. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, all right. So uh, this uh, career strategy or a dashboard, as you, you may call it, wish to call it, um, is a complement to an individual's resume. So if uh, all of you provide services to, to, up, to enhance and modify uh, your client's resume, we all know resumes are about the past. 
And a good deal of uh, interviews take place about what they want to do now and within the next five to seven years. This is, uh, this is a conduit to explain our behaviors, our goal and aspirations, and what we need to do to get there. Our development plan should support and complement that role that we are, that the individual is applying for. And it should clearly complement it. But that's not the case today, right? Most people will go and apply for a job and that they're probably 95 to 100% qualified for. And if they're not, they're not always ready to articulate why they're 80 or 85% or 75% qualified. And we wanna help them explain, tell their story about what they wanna accomplish and how that role that they're interviewing for fits in the big picture. So this is the compliment to an individual's resume. All right, I've repeated that, so I'm gonna move on. We're gonna look at real briefly, and then we can take questions about the uh, learning and development plan steps four and five and how we create and generate that particular section of the ICP. This is one of our uh, major tools of the program. It's called the Individual Gaps and Development Summary, IGADS. Pretty straightforward, it's an Excel table. We ask individuals in step two to do a deep dive of jobs, job descriptions, to understand skills, competencies, and behaviors. We ask them to put those specific skills in this column. And then we have the individual and their supervisors do an assessment of their capabilities. And we put them here. So an individual, um, their expertise or depth of knowledge could be novice, intermediate, or expert, or they have no experience whatsoever for that skill. And once they've identified those uh, skill sets, we would then, if for the ones that are identified as a gap or novice, we would then generate learning strategies. And this is where the integration of an individual's employer and HR comes in, right? It could be uh, on the job, and this is, this is an HR philosophy or principle, right? 70, 20, 10. 70% 70 is on the job training. 20% is um, having a, a teacher, instructor, or a role model to coach and mentor. 10% is self-learning. These are various ways for individuals to grow. And it's not always about promotions. It's a lot focus, it's heavy focus on skills and competency training and development. For those specific attributes and skills that are identified here that are a gap or a novice, we transition to the lower left. So for me, I was a global director of supply chain for a medical device company and a director, I think even executives, I think Jane mentioned, uh, everyone has a development uh, strategy. We all have areas we could continue to improve on to make ourselves better, more productive, uh, better as leaders, no matter what part of the organization we support. Last slide, and we'll talk and uh, brainstorm. Uh, this particular outside represents uh, a talent management strategy or model, right? This is pretty familiar, hopefully, to everyone. Workforce planning, recruitment, onboarding, performance and succession planning and management, learning and development, and then analytics. The gray circle inside our, is the My Career Assist Career Development Program. And our, our endeavor is to integrate our program and framework and the outputs of that, which is data, into the talent strategies so that we can support workforce planning. So if it's, let's say a small size company of a thousand people, and then it turns out that, you know, once they went through our model or excuse me, our, our, our program, 80% wants to be a manufacturing leader. That seems to be an imbalance because the other, other functions within the organization and the, these are all, all uh, important and critical are underserved. So the talent strategy and the talent development strategy is going to be different. The reason why we bring this up is because the outcomes and the data generated from this program 
could be invaluable in supporting talent strategy and talent management within an organization or a company. All right, I'm gonna go back and uh, ask some questions. You know, what are your experiences with your coaching? Now, uh, what, are there any areas you see that we're not covering that you would like to see some insight or changes to? And how can you and your uh, clients partic uh, possibly derive value in a way of collaboration from this type of uh, structure and program? Um, so I have a thought, Ed. Yes. That is, um, I, I like this. And what the thing that seems to be missing for me is what are the obstacles? So obstacles are blocks. I love how positive it is. Like here's the steps and here's how you would get to the steps with more skills. But what about there's some blocks um, and that, that could come out of an assessment maybe of is the, you know, is the person um, fearful? Are they afraid of success, afraid of failure? Or are they, uh, are they terrible at office politics? You know, they're too nice or they're not nice enough. Um, I don't see the touchy feely aspects. And as a life coach, that, that's the first thing that I would look for. I mean, you can have a nice long step-by-step -step list, but if you're afraid to go there or um, you're too, too much of a pleaser, and not enough of, you know, there's not enough assertiveness, those things um, might block the individual from achieving their plan. I'm so glad you asked that, Elizabeth. Um, in the branding section, right, we'll go back, uh, the branding section, let's see. The branding section, we had a, a number of assessments that we asked our participants to take. And then um, we have one that, that's uh, uh, related to preferences and personalities. So it's called, I think, 16 Personalities. It, it, it's the free version of the Myers-Briggs. It's very closely tied to it. Um, individuals would then go in and take the assessments and evaluate the outcomes, right? And then they would then, uh, we would coach them to have them understand the, the specific behaviors and requirements of a particular role that they wish to aspire to grow to. And then we reconcile it with the outcomes of their assessments, okay? And then, we, and then we identify if there are gaps or if there's challenges for them where they may not exhibit uh, all of the behaviors that are required. And so we start to identify key gaps. So the EGATS, that, that, that table is very powerful because it doesn't look for just, and let me take a, let's toggle back. This is great discussion, I love it. Uh, it doesn't look simply at hard skills. It looks at transferable and leadership skills as well. Right? And so this is where the other part I'm terribly excited is. So um, this framework enables, it is a, a vehicle to support coaching, uh, sorry, to support the need for coaching. It isn't just career coaches that help here. It's actually better for life coaches, productivity coaches to uh, be a part of this program because the career, career coaching is automated. It's through our framework. It's the outcomes and data that's uh, that we generate for each individual is highly unique. And that's where coaches, again, life coaches and productivity coaches have an in, uh, invaluable, uh, it's an invaluable way for coaches to participate and support the growth for these individuals. So we don't have direct answers to your position. We don't, it's not clear to say weaknesses, but um, the individual, right, the, their soft, the, the elements and attributes of their personal identity or professional identity will be uncovered through the assessments. And then they will reconcile with those behaviors that are required for the position. We will document them here in their EGADs and it'll then be populated and prioritized into their ICP. It's, it's a little tedious manually, but um, we're building our, uh, our digital tool now and it'll be really cool because they only have to enter it in one place and how they designate it, it'll just come out very nicely in an output in this form. In our program, our program is either one or two days, it's less than a week in total, but then we give, um, uh, as part of our program, there's two one hour coaching sessions. That's where uh, I aspire, I envision that we can collaborate with the broader coaching community. 
Ed, this is Carmen. Uh, Hi, Carmen. I, hello, can I just follow up on what Elizabeth uh, just asked? Um, this is obviously a techie <laughs> mindset. So it's very well presented. You've got all the steps, lots of you know, information, but there are people that, um, but I'm glad you kind of, there are people who go, well, okay, but what about the emotional component? What about mm -hmm. skills component? Uh, mm -hmm. I think what you've answered is that will be unveiled when they take an assessment like the MBTI or the other assessments that you have. And that's where you'll see the gaps. Hey, this person needs to uh, understand what that uh, uh, networking is important to them or they need to understand that they need more communication skills, or they just need to understand uh, that they need a little bit of uh, training in a particular specific skill. So that's what you, is that what you're saying? So it fits in yes. when, when those gaps are revealed, then a coach can come in and yes. closing that gap. Is that's that right. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Because right. we, we know that automation doesn't solve everything. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and, and what we believe is creating data helps mm -hmm. a lot because this vehicle, one of the mo uh, one of the things I love about what we've created, of course, right? Why wouldn't I not like it? Um, is the fact that the content here enables um, individuals to be mentored easier. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I mentor a lot of younger professionals. They come in unprepared. I did just say, I want to know how I get to the next level. That's a very broad um uh, statement they just want a promotion is that and that's my first question is that's what you want what do you want right and so we go through steps just like many of you may if they had a career development plan i'll go to their career development plans what aspect of your development would you like help with so and hopefully yeah what you've really done is capture in a format with you know um left brain lots of left brain presentation but you leave room for that right brain component to be absolutely yes and it makes sense the the whole brain the whole person has to be looked at if they really want to achieve their goals they can't just go oh yes i want to fly to the moon and you but i don't know you know i'm scared of heights well let's look at that okay so all right good right the learning strategy is here in this column okay right so we give them, and, and they can do it manually or digitally. And the, th the thing that the outcome had, that has surprised me the most is that when we ask our clients to go through this and to work through, right, the grunt work, it's actually have been quite wonderful because they have to sit and, and force themselves to answer the questions, to be honest with themselves. Because once you put it on paper, it seems like it's a contract with themselves. And so that's been a very positive outcome for us. Uh, because right the the quality the quantitative part that's what we're going to help them uncover put it on paper put it on um type it in somewhere and then the then the more personalized um soft skills aspect we're gonna you know it's gonna come out right there's transferable skills and leadership skills and that's based on um in, informational interviews job descriptions conversations that they have with either the interview team or the employer, different um, different people in the organization. Um, and they basically gave themselves um, a very long list of things to look at. I see these are the things that I have, right? And, and it's, it's much a better prepared way, we believe, to help people think about how to get qualified for something that uh, is aspirational, something. It's, we're not helping people find a lateral job because most of them are qualified. And I think that there are coaches, there are job search consultants that can help them. We want them to be very, very comfortable and confident in reaching as high as they want to reach. Yeah. And what you do, uh, you, you, like you said, you visualize an abstract concept that they're in their heads. You create a format for them to put it down and it's when they see it, it too, human nature is, oh, I've now said it, like Doug said, hey, now I have to, yeah. I've said 15 minutes a day, I'm gonna write a book. When you yes. visualize, when you write it, it becomes a contract for yourself. And that's what you created, the format to make that happen. Um, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty cool, but it's, you know, we, and I, I'm glad you haven't forgotten the, the, the people skill component behind that. We can't. We can't, what we want to do is remind everyone that it's not either or, it's both. 
Okay. Thank you. Ed, when you go to the um, your dashboard, uh, what do you call that again? Oh, the ICP, Individual Career Plan. Okay. Um, and I noticed in the um, in the preferences um, that you've got the uh, inconsiderate is the <laughs> fourth fourth item there. Yes. And um, so is this is this a gap or is this um, or maybe this is something that all supply chain executives should have? No, it's what I decide I want to put there. Um, okay. it, it is about my develop. It is absolutely about my development uh, and also a recognition that uh, I have something to work on right. uh, because, uh, yeah, so in, in my in my coach, I have coaches. Uh, actually, I have one coach and I have a handful of mentors um, and they we talk about the fact that um, when we are in when we have to make strategic decisions, sometimes it could be very cold and also very, very ruthless. Um, it is much sometimes, oftentimes it's much more focused on the, um, what is that cliche, maximizing shareholder equity. Uh, then so thinking about probably the most important asset for firms that are its people. And so I want to uh, bring out that I understand that um, our jobs, right, in, in leadership oftentimes are, uh, is inconsiderate. So I'm aware of that. And we try to uh, be as transparent as possible to offer, um, excuse me, let me say it differently. So we, we want to make sure that we um, are considerate of that and aware and that we are always working to see how we can um, improve uh, symbiosis, right? Um, both mm -hmm. the corporation and its people. So I put that there deliberately. Now remember, uh, every participant in our program have design uh, authority to put what they want to put here. I choose not to put everything peachy because that's not real. Just probably mm -hmm. sitting through this talk, you could see that I talk a lot. I'm um, uh, energetic and uh, I, you know, and so uh, that's my truth and I do not uh, hide it because um, if there's a job that I want desperately, I wanna make sure that uh, either I am a fit or I'm not a fit on purpose. And I want to make sure that they get every aspect of me. Yeah. So you would I, give I this, you'd give this individual career plan uh, to a prospective employer? Absolutely. I would. It, 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 you know, this is a great topic or question, Doug, because it requires a lot of courage. If you really want to put something there. Now, remember, um, the, uh, the perspective that we have for our program is that we deliver it via or with HR within a corporation. We prefer that route because we want the employer to, um, to have a, it as a retention strategy for its high performing or, or all of its people. Um, and so in that regard, people already have and probably know a lot of the, my attributes, my employer probably already know what they like about me, what they don't like about me. So um, from that perspective, I shouldn't be, I, I should, I should have much more courage to share this information because it's, it's people already have a perception of who I am. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So they probably already know that you're inconsiderate. So Thank you. if you yes. put it right out there, they say, oh gosh, yes, you, you He's self-aware now. <laughs> yes, that's right. We don't need to tell them anymore. Or, um, yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, when you, so how many, to find the brand, you've got MBT, M, MBTI, the, the Myers-Briggs, you've got, um, do you have DISC in there? Is that one of the ones that you do? No. So um, DISC is one of the very expensive and very thorough ones. And so um, we had to choose um, for where we are in our business right now. We have uh, searched, uh, identified, and tested six different assessments. Uh, the, uh, the 16 preferences is the one that we have chosen for, uh, for the personality assessment. We have a behavioral one that actually it's wired to perform. It's a local company in Jacksonville. It's an outstanding uh, behavioral assessment. It was wonderful. And that's free. 
uh, a values assess uh, the values assessment is from Mind Tools. They, they're all free. They're, there's nothing that we have that um, costs any money, and, and we've tested it and compared it. Uh, one of our advisors in our business is an HR talent acquisition professional, and she's tested it with us, and she likes every single one of them. We, we we love all of them. They're very good. Yeah. So if one of the coaches also <clears throat> provided this, they could put that on top of this too. Yes, it would replace 16 personalities. Yes. I see. Okay. Yeah. If someone is an instructor or, or have a license for their clients, yeah, they can just replace. And that, and that would show up on this somehow? Uh, um, when, when, when we sign a contract, right, um, we ask for a deposit. And once we, get, uh, once we align with the deposit, we send them our workbooks. And um, our workbooks has all the instructions, links of all the tools and resources that we use. And they get the... They get a, a, um, a template, an ICP template, a blank one. Yeah. And then they also get the, um, um, the EGADs. And we go in there and then we customize it for the clients. I see. Okay. So if, if somebody, um, so if let's say uh, Lindley wanted to do this for one of her clients, and I think she does DISC, um, then mm -hmm. she could say, okay, um, Ed, when you negotiate this, make sure you negotiate the disc fee. In That's there right. Also. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Any other questions, comments? Um, I have another comment. <laughs> Well, you said you talk a lot. Maybe, maybe I do too. Um, so I have 20 years of corporate accounting experience, all as an individual performer. And I would say, even though with an MBA and a CPA, I think I intimidated all of my managers. I think it would be a culture shift for the places that I worked, which were all very large corporations, Citigroup, uh, General Motors, mm -hmm. Key Bank. Um, Maybe at the top, they want the people to be all developed, but at the individual level, the manager is controlling their little kingdom and wanting people to stay, you know, keep their heads down so the manager says, you know, shine. And um, that's that was my personal experience over, you know, those 20 years. So I, how can, or how do you reward or incentivize them the first line manager to make sure that this is working for the person. Like what's, what's the strategy there? For the, for the managers? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, I could have done all of this work, but, in, you know, as long as my manager wanted to keep me hidden so that I didn't outshine them, that was, I was never going anywhere. Oh, so we, we do this um, so that um, professionals uh, do not have to rely on their managers um, to uh, navigate and grow their careers. So um, thank you for asking, Elizabeth, because we have a really good example. So um, uh, management, uh, middle management layers turn over a, a good deal of times, right? And some don't, some do, right? Um, there was an individual, uh, not it's, it was someone on my team, um, who moved out to another job, and they they uh, they had said that uh, their manager, their direct supervisor, didn't offer that kind of support. And so, um, at the time, we had a working document of the EGATS, which is the, the the gaps in development summary. So we built that for them, and uh, I became that person's mentor because I was their previous supervisor, and. Um, uh, that individual gave the EGATs to their manager during their career discussions and said, this is what I want to do. Uh, this is uh, um, how I would like to do it. And uh, would you offer me help? And uh, they didn't really get a direct answer, yes or no. And so they said, just to let you know, I will be you know, uh, doing informational interviews and also reaching out to HR uh, for learning and development opportunities. Um, I appreciate your support but you don't have to do it just so you know, there's transparency that over time, this is what I believe that I want to do. And so that, would, that gave him a lot of courage because um, no manager, I think ethically should ever have that power to say you cannot do anything. Um, their job is to make sure that you do your jobs well 
And as long as you have, uh, at least, uh, as long as you meet or exceed, right, your goals every year, if you do it consistently, um, they know over time, and their HR business partner should tell them this, that you're, that there is a, a diminishing returns from a, from a productivity level for an individual being there seven, eight, nine years. And so there has to be organic turnover. And so um, that worked for um, many people that go through our program and it gives them courage so, because they have a strategy and it's actually, it's really cool. Um, if the manager doesn't add value to that strategy, that's not necessarily a good look on them. So it, it almost compels them to participate, right? And so if they don't, hmm, interesting, that's not, it's not necessarily good for their careers, right? Because everyone, um, all of us people leaders, and I was one, our role is to get uh, to help individuals thrive in their current role and help them if they can, if they're qualified, help them move into roles that they're happy with and fulfilled because that their productivity goes up. And so um, turnover is a norm. I mean, we, we've, we're learning that human resources science tells us that it's better to have turnover, to have new challenges instead of staying in the same place. So uh, I'm very sorry that that, that that happened and I wish I met you a decade ago, Elizabeth. Well, right. And, you know, I have skills now as a coach that I didn't have. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. When I was working as an accountant, but most accountants, I would say, are their individual performers that are now manage other people. <laughs> so they still are doing accounting work. There's very few accounting managers that are just managing. They're doing mm -hmm. they're doing accounting. That's right. And they also need to deal with people. And so accountants aren't known for our um you know, touchy feely abilities, more left brain, but still, yeah, I think it, it, it while it's the, all this looks great, but from my personal experience, it would just, it takes a lot of assertiveness on the part of the individual. And that's where the coaching could really benefit a person. That's true. And, and, and that's um, our goal, right? We need to reach human resources executives and leaders because if they are promoting this, that's a whole transformation, cultural transformation. Because then managers will have to get on the bus. They can no longer say, no, I want this person here forever. That doesn't, I mean, I, I would be surprised to hear that. But um, if we are able to reach leader, uh, HR leaders and they are endorsing our program as a collaboration, it would be hugely important because that means that um, the that um, fear that people have of HR would change. It, it, they probably would be suspect in the beginning, but once they see the value of the program and they go through it, ah, it's still I'm still it's still my responsibility, my career. But now there's a conduit. I can build a strategy, and then I can ask for help. That's how it works. Get it? Got it? I understand. And I have a question. So the question is I have is the client that you sell to is the individual, not the organization. The individual. Yes. No, it's the, yes. Yeah. They're it's, the ones it's, you're they're the ones you are um, accountable to is the uh, the actual no. So I was a little flippant. I said yes to both. So it's we have individual clients, but we prefer to sell to organizations. Okay. Because, so. Yes, it's far better to sell to organizations because it's a retention. It could be used as a retention strategy. Okay, so then the question that Elizabeth asked about having a manager who is reluctant to promote their people, uh, they're part of the organization, so they That's would right. have to say to uh, on how who would be who who you would be helping. They could say, hey, you know, Joe over here, he's really good at accounting. I want to keep him here. You know, I don't want him to do become a supervisor two levels higher than me. And your client is the person two hires or three hires than that person. The, the, the client is the organization. So how would you deal, you know, because the answer you gave to Elizabeth was if the individual is the client, they could marginalize to some extent that obstacle of that person. And they, that who it's in their way, and that person could also see, hey, it doesn't look good for me to not support my my group, my team. But if the client is the organization, mm -hmm. so that's a little trickier to put aside or to not engage in. Uh, so you would have to involve the other uh, people who work 
or you know the middle level the middle level which is the obstacle i think that elizabeth it, if if um, our strategy and approach is this if we get um organizational hr involved that would remove a significant amount of roadblocks and those uh it would change the way uh middle managers uh um treat career development okay. now productivity is still a different thing but mm -hmm. careers um, th our program doesn't doesn't focus we never talked about promotions right i keep saying it's not about promotions it's all about skills and growth and development um and it would be interesting or it'd be counter to what hr leaders are trying to accomplish is is to build highly effective people leaders in all um roles in the company um mm -hmm. Right, it, it would be very, it would be counterintuitive, we believe. And so getting buy-in from HR is really important because now um, individuals cannot say, uh, sorry, managers and directors cannot say, uh, yeah, I, I don't want, that person cannot, uh, that person should be doing X, Y, and Z. Okay. Yeah. They shouldn't do that anyways, right? But, but now it's even, if there's a program for careers and there's not that many in, 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 in corporations uh, in, in the U.S. Um, if there's a careers program, that means everyone should, as part of the organization, should understand and aware that that is there. Um, and it's a privilege and that we all should be supporting each other. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I just kind of wanted to echo what Elizabeth had to say. Um, I had some similar experiences early in my career. In fact, 1975 New Year's resolution was to get involved in the women's movement because I went to see the boss who was laying me off. I'd gotten the highest score on a test at the Navy base about drug counseling and they were laying me off. And I just said, you know, this is crazy. And his response was, little lady, don't you know, you shouldn't talk to a man before he's had a cup of coffee. And it was like, what? I was out of a job. But I also question whether or not HR is the right place to embrace this. Um, I'm not a fan of HR. I think some of our issues that we have in the workplace are a direct result of uh, either silence or poor implementation of inclusion, letting everybody be at the table. And I, I'm afraid to minimize this screen to find the article that I shared on LinkedIn. I believe it was this week. The SEC is requiring public companies to disclose the actual numbers of people that are being hired that are other than people who look like me. And I think that's a great step in the right direction because some of the biggest companies that claim to be diverse and you know great careers, I'll, I'll give an example. JP Morgan Chase used to have a career center. They don't have one anymore. I worked with the people that got laid off on another project a few years ago. And the list goes on and on and on. Some of the biggest name companies who claim that they're working to change the way the workplace looks and performs are the biggest culprits. And I'll get off my soapbox. But I think you've got a great opportunity here. So, so I, I love that. I think we need to talk about it, right? And, and um, I do not take what Elizabeth is asking as any sort of attack. I love it. It's important, right? We don't grow. We won't solve that problem that you're talking about right now, but hopefully we are a conduit and a small cog in yeah. a very, very big process of change that many people will get on board to support. And so um, this is my way of doing it because mm -hmm. I'm a minority. I'm a first generation, I'm an immigrant, and I'm also mm -hmm. a first uh, in my family to graduate uh, from a university, first to get um, a, a graduate degree. So I'm a many firsts. So um, in my career, I, I've been very, very fortunate and very, very grateful with a lot of people supporting me because I, if I didn't have the support, I would have no clue or I wouldn't have mm -hmm. been able to you know, make a lot of money uh, in a leadership role uh, for uh, an international corporation a healthcare corporation, right? I've never, and so there are many people probably have a lot less opportunities for, than me. And so, and, and you're right, Jane, HR may not be the right place. Um, we're trying to I find that to right CEO place. CEO or whoever's in charge. Right, right. And so that's a great point, right? And so, um, yes, we're doing our outreach. We're, re we're, we're reaching professional organizations. We're talking to universities and Doug had a phenomenal 
idea that um, we're going to try to design in somehow. Uh, Damien is chairing. He's taking, you know, he's taking what little time or no time he has to help us reach black professionals. We have a women work, a women professional organization that's going to start in 2022. There's many ways for us to deliver the same content, and we're going to make sure that um, the the soft skills, right, um, are going to be uh, not only uh, uh, reinforce, but uh, there's going to be focus uh, and ways for our program to tease that out to make sure that people are getting the right support from a quantitative skill pers perspective as well as a soft skills perspective. One so. of the questions I always ask a leader when I'm helping them uh, build or revise a resume is, well, how many people did you develop to move on to oh, other great one. roles? You would be, well, you, you won't be shocked. Not everybody does that. Or the one who's been a manager for I don't know how many years and said, I don't want to be a manager again because I'm tired of babysitting people. It's like, how miserable was that person for how many years? You know, just right. Crazy. I'll, I'll right. be quiet. Right. So um, I don't know how much time we have, but I'm probably already stealing time. Um, the, in each of our um, industries or, or segments that we're chasing or pursuing, right? For corporations, we want to work with... Um, companies and its people so that um, people it, they get to choose who they want to work for but we do have that freedom whether we believe it or not we get to choose and so if they get to choose and find a company that they love we hope to reach that company so that we can work with them to give their workforce an opportunity to stay and to be fulfilled and developed for um, government uh, government agencies especially for military we want to support those that are transitioning out of active duty into a career. They're entering into the workforce and a good percentage of them have never had a civilian job in their life. We need to help them. Uh, we've talked, we've spoken with vets, uh, sorry, retired service members who are already in uh, leadership positions. And they said that there are so many people that could use this because even before they enter, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, before they entered TAP, right? If they had an opportunity to go through this kind of program, they would then identify a, a, a particular career path or goal, and then we would help them define skills. And if they don't have skills, they can then start to get training and education because uh, the military, the DOD, and the VA have resources for them to learn skills of, like, I don't know how many thousands of different jobs and, and, and uh, career paths. And so that they can start to learn and acquire education before they go into TAP and then transition out. They would be better prepared to have a life outside of the military. That's a powerful thing. I don't know how we're going to get engaged in that way, but we're extremely excited. Um, but, we're, but we're trying to network within uh, the VA. We're trying to network with uh, the DOD. I actually uh, pitched to two uh, TAP directors and they told me they can't redesign anything, unfortunately, but they were very happy to hear about what we're trying to do. That was really nice. So. Um, yeah. And then, go ahead, Brian. Definitely, and I think it's um, it's it's tough because a lot of military will not get to this point until about a a couple of months or, or, or mostly a year out, mm -hmm. and this is they need to do a couple of years out possibly. So, um, love to talk to you more about it offline. Um, again, there's a lot. There's definitely the TAP, the TAP program is not where you want to do it because. Um, it's bureaucratic, um, so if you want to do something like that, there's some other organizations you can plug into, and I'll, I can let you know about those if you want to talk about it. Well, so. yeah, I met you. I met you previous, and I never called you back. So I need. I need, yes, we do need to talk. Yeah. And, and and thank you, Brian. And then the last yeah. part is academic institutions. You know, Doug and I talked about this at lunch yesterday. Now imagine, right? All of us, we have relatives, we have friends who have people who have young people in, enrolled in universities, and how many of them just don't know what it means to manage a career. Um, if we are able to deliver and share our program with these young people you know, who are independent, who are um, ambitious, who are passionate, think about the damage they can do in a good, not damage. Think about the good that they can do in their own careers. Um, set goal setting, understanding how to do goal setting, how to do investigations and job, des job descriptions, uh, informational interviews, so they can acquire understanding of skills and behaviors before they graduate. Now they can pick electives, they can pick internships and co-ops, 
that will help satisfy and develop those specific skill sets. So they can stop taking jobs with Google just because it's with Google. They could take a job with an unknown company in the Midwest because, and hopefully they'll take the job with, that that's right for them, because it helps them satisfy communication skills, design skills because they need it as an engineer, um, or selling skills because they want to be in marketing or sales or become a general manager somewhere. They have more insight into the requirements of a specific goal. And then they can translate that career development plan that they um, generated while in college into their interviews. Imagine that as an interview discussion, instead of saying, I took these jobs, I, mean, I, I took these, I did these projects, I'm a leader, I wanna do this. Now they can articulate, I wanna do this. I went and got a pro, um, I was in a program, I identified this is what I wanted to do. I took an internship that is aligned with my career goal and vision. I learned these skills and these skills are what's important. And this job I'm interviewing with Boeing or with Tesla, fits into my career development plan because I'm going to learn these things, right? So um, you can see why, I mean, th th why this is, this is why I'm really excited about it. It's just unfortunate because I have no brand. We will, we don't have a brand yet. We will have presence and we will have success stories. We, we already do on a small scale, but I can't wait till we reach a large corporation. And I hope to do it with your help, frankly. Well, one of the things um, in the next six minutes, I'd like to hear about what are the uh, barriers that people see to it, you know, and, and may even get uh, Damien's uh, viewpoint because he's in corporate America, uh, so to speak, um, in in the with Ascension uh, Hospital, and what is it that he sees are the um, are the advantages of this program, and then what are the uh, barriers and and so we've in the next five minutes. Um, Damon, do you see anything like that? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to offer my my perspective. Um, and keep in mind I'm biased, so bear with me. <laughs> in full disclosure, um, you know, Eddie and I have had some pretty um robust conversations, and one of the reasons that I'm such a big proponent and advocate of um my career assist is um my own personal experience. Um, you know, I've told Eddie um this on more than one occasion. I think my own professional trajectory could have been different had I had the skills and um, uh, the resources and maybe the focused attention that something like um, um, the EGADS or the ICP would have allowed me to, um, to really tailor my, um, my own development in a way that would get me to the next step on the rung of success, wherever that would have led me to. Um, also, being a um, someone who's kind of grown up in healthcare and in um, in leadership, uh, it's not uncommon to experience lots of um, leadership development programs, but they still kind of leave you wanting. Um, I think many of these programs are geared towards fulfilling. Um, the needs of the organization and not so much the needs of the individual. And again, uh, to Jane's point about HR being um, sometimes a hindrance or a hiccup, it's very true. And again, um, you know, I enjoy my current role. Um, it's afforded me opportunities to do some things, but I think um, my boss and my boss's boss would be very happy if I remained at the seat for a very long time because I perform at a high level. Um, and it's better to have someone there than be looking for the next individual, the loss of productivity, the loss of um, the opportunity costs that it's, you're gonna incur as an organization. So sure, having me here makes a whole lot of sense, but that satisfies their needs, not necessarily my needs. So uh, again, that's why I'm such a big proponent. And um, I love the, the thought about building more with young persons um, uh, early on in their careers. Again, I, I think if you're gonna, change direction or help folks change or navigate things, do it early when they're young, impressionable, and extremely hungry. So great thoughts. Um, so good. Thank you, Damien. That's sure. great perspective. Um, uh, in the next couple of minutes, anybody else have any uh, comments or strategies to offer Ed?
Hey, Ed, have you had a chance to look at ONET at all about their um, their process? Yes, we're trying to, and we're too small, right? We, we, we're trying to integrate. So in the future, our vision is that we have a fully vetted platform uh, that uh, links to standardized skills, uh, right? So like, that's gonna be powerful. And then we're gonna derive our, I'm talking like just uh, theory, but because we, we have a plan, we're gonna create a job search engine that's actually going to go backwards. We're not gonna look at, um, we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna help people find jobs where they have skills gaps. Not that you're 100% qualified for a job, but it's going to be the other way around. Uh, it's going to be aligned with their career paths. It's going to be aligned with the skills that they, 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 they I've identified as gaps, not necessarily as, as gaps that they have that, you know, so that you're fully qualified for the job you're looking for. So it's going to be different. We're very excited about ONET. We've been on the line. Uh, we've actually pulled one or two um, assessments from, um, what is it, My, uh, mynextmove.com. I forgot the specific, um, it's, it's a tangential um, ONET online um, website, uh, but it is Department of Labor. We're, we're well connected in it. Um, uh, it's very powerful. We, we're just not ready from a technology level right now, but yes. Okay. And I think it also, there's another person in town here that operates um, an organization called ATG um, and they do a lot of work with, um, with using um, different um, assessments to help um, people find that next job and, and, and things like that. that might be a might be value for you to meet that person and kind of talk with them also. I'm not sure if there's any synergy there or not, but uh, I'll definitely catch you. You and I need to talk offline again, okay? Thank you so very much, all of you, for giving me your time and attention. Um, We've set up um, a different cohort because of Doug, um, and uh, we'll be meeting uh, monthly. So if you're interested, please let me know. We'll add you on. Uh, Leila is part of this cohort, and our, our um, goal is going to be to collaborate and brainstorm how do we reach um, organizations uh, and, and, and do career counseling uh, as groups and functions instead of individuals, um, and uh, how do we help each other and how do we collaborate. So. Um, Please let us know if you want to participate. Yeah, good. Good. Well, thank you very much, Ed. This has been uh, fantastic, and um, and so appreciate your uh, sharing with us uh, all that you've developed and put this whole thing together. It's um, just tremendous. So, um, and I think it'll be helpful to all coaches. Uh, in, it's not just that the all ships will rise on this on this rising tide. But in addition, I think it'll be um, that you'll be able to collaborate with so many coaches and um, and actually enhance their business. Um, uh, you know, so so yeah, keep it up. Uh, keep us in, informed how you're moving, and we will do these um, uh, this, these sidebar discussions and continue to to um, make sure that you're successful as well as all the coaches, because that's one of the things that we want to do here at Coach Jacks is make sure that we're all successful uh, in our practices and, um, and we um, show Jacksonville and the world uh, that uh, coaching is how it works. And, um, and the more engaged employees are, the more productive they are and therefore uh, the more profitable. So it, it all makes sense, makes financial sense and everything. So um, so thank you all for, for coming and um, uh, we will see you in a month. In a month will be um, April 5th and then April 6th. Uh, the topics, uh, if you have a topic that you'd like to suggest to me, uh, email me or call me and because uh, we've got um, um, uh, Plenty of meetings ahead and plenty of topics to discuss. So love it that you all showed up. Thank you. And uh, see you next month. Thank Have a you. great month. Take care, Thank everyone. You, Ed.